Hi everyone, it's your boy Zach. So while I was getting ready to do this video, I was like, oh yeah, and I'm gonna, you know, get this panel from this book, and it's like, I got shit to do. So just use, it's theater of the mind. Use your imagination just to remember these. So I saw this uh, article on Bleeding Cool, and I saw this picture of uh, Spider-Man swinging over and kind of startling uh, Captain Marvel. And with all of the baggage that Captain Marvel has as a character or has been put upon her. And, you know, anytime you see a new artist draw Captain Marvel, it's a game. How manly is he going to make her? Now, generally, she's fairly feminine, but, you know, it's become a rule that Captain Marvel cannot have large breasts. So I was even looking at him and I was like, I, I, I just started like laughing to myself that like Spider-Man has been deputized <laughs> like he swings up and he's like whoa 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 those things are looking a little full today <laughs> like what's the deal and then i started coming up with a uh like a uh you know when they give those uh codes to things so it's like a cup a equals allowed b equals be careful uh c equals cancellation and d equals death <laughs> <laughs> it, it took me five years to get here, but I got here. So anyway, um, um, I've seen, you know, you're not supposed to notice things, but I notice things. And I work with artists, and the number one thing that I have to talk about with not just one, not two, not three, don't feel singled out, it's most of them, is how they draw women. It feels like it's a combination of a couple of things. Number one, there's just not a lot of formal training in comics. And I would say there is less now than ever. It's just people alone in their room. Um, is I constantly have to do like paint overs. I'll take a screenshot and I'll, I'll because I'll say like, hey, um, you need to redraw this woman. She's not beautiful. And then they're like, well, what do you mean? <laughs> I, was, I was like, I don't know another like <laughs> if. If we don't both agree on what the word beautiful means, that's going to be very difficult. And so I'll do a paint over and I'll say, you know, all these lines make this woman look very old. This very square jawline makes her look, you know, very masculine. And when I say it, I've, I've never gotten pushback. It seems to be more like the entire concept that this is a visual medium and that women should be not just beautiful, but exceptionally beautiful. Um, it's like that's been forgotten or more likely it's been basically, you know, um, people have been intimidated out of even thinking about it pre, <laughs> you know, five years ago, I can only think of one successful artist who was not good at drawing exceptionally beautiful woman. And that was uh, Jack Kirby. All of his women, they always looked like, like washer women. <laughs> And I'm not talking about, like, from a laundry in, like, Manhattan. I'm talking about, like, from the village that Borat lives in. Like, just a broken-down old woman who just drags a basket around. You just throw your, you know, filthy farm clothes in there. And she just groan. <laughs> like, that's, like, every every woman. If you, if you ever say, well, no, I saw a really beautiful drawing. Go find the original pencils. If you saw a really beautiful drawing by Jack Kirby, it was Joe Sinet putting in a lot of extra work. And that's coming from a fan of Jack Kirby. He just didn't draw beautiful women. Every other, you know, consistently. It's not, and, and, and not even just like they were good at other things. Like their women would be exceptionally beautiful. I mean, it just ones that are just popping into my head. Mary Jane, drawn by Todd McFarlane. Um, uh, Susan Storm drawn by John Byrne. Uh, Electra could be a little rough as drawn by Frank Miller, but whenever he was working with someone like Claus Jansen, like there's one, um, it's, uh, you know, Electra looking for that dojo in the snow. And when you find the original pencils, it's kind of like, ooh, she looks pretty rough. But uh, Claus Jansen basically redrew the entire, he kept the same composition and the same angle, but he redrew like almost all of it. So she looks beautiful because it's a it's a visual medium. Now, of course, SJWs have completely intimidated people and they have a very purposeful reason to feminize men, 
masculinize women. But I'm always shocked, like, it's it's with people who have worked with me, you know, for a few years. So they know I'm not going to, like, fire them or anything. It's just become so um, uh, dangerous, you know. You don't want to be, you know, the guy who draws very beautiful women. You want to you want to do approved body type. And approved body type is this body type I've noticed that is allowed. It's fairly fit, but not especially, like, the hips are going to be wide, but not very wide, you know. The breasts are going to be barely there. Uh, you're allowed to, <laughs> generally, you're allowed to draw a pretty face on a woman. But even that, it seems like almost they, they, they're not trying. They don't care. But it's, it's more of a uh, pervasive atmosphere uh, of uh, intimidation. Sean Gordon Murphy has talked about, you know, in uh, interviews, he jokes about it, but it's one of those jokes where he, he got like watery eyes and he's basically, he basically says he, he can't go too crazy when he's drawing women or he's going to get intimidated and targeted, not that he didn't get targeted for everything else. But um, this is a real important thing. And, you know, there's a constant conversation about, you know, what can we do to improve comics? Oh, we need to be back in the malt shops. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> there used to be, you know, entire careers just based off, like, what is Adam Hughes? Oh, he's a cover artist who draws beautiful women. What is J. Scott Campbell? Well, he used to do sequentials. Jeez, it's been a while. But now he mainly does variant covers with beautiful women. Although, if you look... J. Scott Campbell, you know, he's been targeted by SJWs multiple times. Um, it's, it is funny, when they had that uh, uh, Spectre Con, that Illuminati Con at Lake Como, first of all, very little diversity. <laughs> I think it's funny the people who got invited to it that are not saying anything about the lack of diversity. Uh, it's basically two things. It's, you know, classic um, uh, A-list artists like Bill Sienkiewicz. And it's also just, and there are a few women, but the only women there are the women who draw, you know, extremely beautiful women. It, it, there's no uh, artists that draw average looking women. When you get the members of Spectre and Ro Russian oligarchs and people with money, that's what they want. But that's also, that's what everyone wants. It's not only if, you know, you like women, but it's also aspirational. I have not seen, show me the uh, superheroes with a bald spot. Show, show me, show it to me. Show me. There's a couple superheroes with receding hairlines. Forge is kind of famous for his uh, receding hairline. There aren't superheroes with bald spots. It just doesn't happen. The looks of men are idealized, and the looks of women used to be idealized, but now they have to be realistic. And so we're going from uh, amazing sales to realistic sales. And a lot of that is this uh, weird um, uh, Harrison Bergeron. Uh, Harrison Bergeron is this Kurt Vonnegut story about, um, it's kind of, actually, it's kind of ridiculous to explain it. Basically it was that, you know, people can't be exceptional. So if someone is exceptional, you have to make them look or act ridiculous so that non-exceptional people don't get bothered. Um, but, uh, <laughs> we've seen way too many average looking women in comics and it's, uh, hurt sales and it just makes it just, a, it's not funny. It's not fun. It's not interesting. If, if, if you can go to freaking Kroger and see more beautiful women there than you can see in Marvel Comics, that's a problem. Not for Kroger. Now, that should go in there, you know, circulars. We got more beautiful women than, uh, you know, Target. Uh, but, um, yeah, it's something that is missed. And I also see that the, you know, the new generation are, they're either scared out of drawing truly beautiful women or they've literally come into the industry where it's so rare that they don't understand like what they're doing wrong. It's like, well, she's worried. Why wouldn't I give her like three forehead wrinkles? Well, she's, you know, in her 20s. And, you know, eyebrows can hit a lot of different shapes that can indicate a lot of different uh, emotions. And you don't need to give her forehead wrinkles like you would a man. You don't need to do a bunch of shading and shadowing on her face because every line will age her. And that's a typical thing of female beauty is, you know, they're not going to be craggy. <laughs> a man, you know, a certain, you know, man, you know, uh, can uh, still be handsome with, you know, forehead wrinkles and crow's feet, you know, furrows on his face. It's, it's real difficult for women to pull that off. Anyway, thanks for watching. Bye.